Hello, welcome back and nice to see you again. Another question that comes up while assessing policy is whether the European Union, as a level of governance, needs to develop policy. Would it be better to return authority over certain European policies to national or even regional government, especially when their impact is disappointing? Can decentralization help? Discussions on whether the European Union should develop common policy have existed since the beginning of European cooperation. Member States always have been aware of the threat of the EU to their own national policy domains. Only when cooperation was unavoidable and yielded important political and economic benefits did Member States decide to move some of these tasks to the European level. The process of European integration is one of functional and political spillovers combined with intergovernmental breakthroughs. For example, the Common Market Programme can be viewed as a way to combat economic stagnation and unemployment, and closer cooperation in the area of justice and home affairs was a way of addressing cross-border crime and terrorism. In discussions on whether the EU should take on some new policy, lip service is often paid to two principles. The first one is subsidiarity which says that there must be no European policy if the Member States can effectively deal with an issue. The second is proportionality. It indicates that the efforts of making and implementing European policy should match the identified problem and objectives. The impact assessments of the European Commission must pay attention to both principles. Interestingly, for the assessment on subsidiarity, national parliaments and the Committee of the Regions also play a role. As part of the legislative process, national parliaments may voice subsidiary concerns about legislative proposals. This is called the Early Warning Mechanism, or Yellow Card Procedure, provided in two protocols of the Lisbon Treaty. When at least one-third of the chambers of national parliaments object to a proposal, the Commission has to reconsider its proposal. Next to this yellow card, an orange card exists. When at least 50% of the national parliaments make an objection, the Council may decide by a majority of 55% of its members to stop the proposal. Over the last years, the early warning mechanism has attracted many reasoned opinions from national parliaments. National parliaments often voice a broad set of political concerns about new Commission proposals. This engagement may help in increasing national support for EU policy. Despite the impressive number of attempts, national parliaments only managed to raise a yellow card three times. In 2012 on the proposal regulating strikes, in 2013 on the establishment of the European Public Prosecutor's Office, and in 2016 on the amendment of the Posting of Workers Directive. In response, the Commission withdrew its proposal on strikes but didn't want to withdraw its proposals in the other two cases. In examining these objections, the Commission felt that national parliaments pointed at a variety of reasons that didn't correspond with each other. Moreover, the Commission indicated that specific remarks and concerns about the proposal were not strictly related to subsidiarity. This rather formal treatment of concerns doesn't stimulate national parliaments to continue on this road. There are calls to further strengthen the role of national parliaments in the legislative process by, for instance, providing them the possibility of a veto or a red card. Such a card was initially foreseen in the failed draft constitution for Europe. It reappeared in a slightly different way in the deal between the UK and the EU in the run-up to the Brexit referendum. Voting for leave, this deal is, at the moment, off the table. The Lisbon Treaty offers another institutional safeguard and subsidiarity to the Committee of the Regions. Next to Member States, the Committee may bring a case before the Court of Justice to annul a European Act on subsidiarity grounds. This option only applies to legislative acts for which consultation of the Committee is required. Furthermore, a case should be started within two months after publication. So far, this possibility hasn't yet been used. The committee has indicated that it will use this option only as a last resort. 
Nevertheless, as observers noted, the Commission takes the recommendations of the Committee more seriously as it can be a stepping stone to litigation. Despite the fact that the EU has extensive procedures and safeguards, less clear is whether these contribute to policies that are made at the appropriate level. Why not decentralized when it's clear that European policymaking doesn't deliver on its promises? Don't forget that the same applies to national policymaking and allowing regional or local governments to deal with specific policy problems. This idea of reconsidering European policymaking is part of the Commission's refit agenda. Still, the very idea of returning responsibility to member states is rather controversial. When the newly installed Juncker Commission suggested that some problems, and in this case the use of plastic bags, shouldn't be handled by the EU, Parliament and the member states protested heavily. Intergroups reacted furiously as well to the very idea that ongoing initiatives could be withdrawn from the legislative agenda. Decentralization also requires careful preparation and needs to be supported by interest groups. Perhaps regional and local governments united in the Committee of Regions could voice such an opinion more forcefully. The same applies to the numerous representations of governments in Brussels. But also we, citizens, should be more outspoken on ongoing policy and new initiatives. Only when the elected politicians understand that their ideas are no longer supported, will they change. From that perspective, it's important that we voice what we think.